Hello Internet and welcome to another tutorial video for Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. Today we'll be talking about the basics of looting. This means that I'm going to teach you how to do it and where you should be looting in the early days of your game. Now honestly, it's a bit of a tricky thing to talk about since your priorities will mainly be determined by what items you need in that moment. I will, however, dump some meta knowledge on you that experienced players already know. So first up, let's talk about how to loot. Now we covered the basic controls in a previous video, but to recap, you're going to need to know how to move your character and how to pick things up. Pickup can be done using the lowercase g key and selecting a tile where there is loot. You can also use the examine command if you rebind the E key to include picking up items, you can find that in your keybinds by searching the word examine. Finding loot really isn't that hard, it will be everywhere, and most of the time you will be able to see the items on the ground or on tables or wherever, even if you're far away. However, some container items have their contents hidden until you approach them. For example, in real life, if you saw a locker or a cabinet, you would not know what is inside until you approached it and opened the door. You don't have to open the door in Cataclysm, if you simply move adjacent to one of these objects, you will then be able to see what is inside. Most commonly, this will happen for lockers, kitchen cupboards, and fridges. Those are the three that you will probably loot the most frequently, but there are other things that do it too, like desks and dressers, things like that. You'll learn which objects do this as you go, and you will, it will quickly become muscle memory to check them. When you do find an item that you want, you will use whatever your preferred pickup keybind is, and it will open a new menu. This will be the pickup menu, which has recently been reworked, so if you're on older versions, it may look a little different. Once in this menu, you will then select the item or item items that you want by toggling them for pickup. You can toggle items for pickup by pressing the corresponding key to whatever is displayed next to the item here. Alternatively, you can move your indicator using the up and down arrow keys to highlight an object that you want and then press the right arrow to toggle it for pickup. You can also toggle to pick up all items in this list by pressing the comma key. Alternatively, you can use category select by pressing the T key on current experimentals or the tab key on the last stable. Then when you toggle something, you will actually be toggling all items in that category. In other words, you could use this to quickly select all books for pickup. Now, unfortunately, with the new pickup menu, this isn't really useful anymore since it doesn't break things down by category, but you can still use this in your inventory or when using other pickup methods like advanced inventory, although I will not be covering that today. A dash or blank space here means that you will not pick up that item. If you toggle it, it will then show a plus sign indicating that you will pick up that item or all of that item depending on how many there are. And if you only want to pick up or drop a specific number of items, you will then type that number before toggling. In other words, if I have 30 of an object and I only want 11 of them, I would type 1-1 and then toggle the item for pickup. When you're only going to pick up or drop a certain number of items, the number sign will be displayed here rather than that plus toggle sign that we talked about before. And of course, you're going to need space in your inventory to accommodate the new items that you're picking up. If you find a large item that does not fit in your inventory, you will have to wield it if you want to hold it on your person. This can happen for items that are too long for your bags or that are just too large in volume to hold in your inventory. On older versions of the game, attempting to pick up one of these items would then prompt you if you wanted your character to wield them. On the version I'm using now, a current experimental, this message is no longer displayed and you have to wield them manually using the lowercase w key. It's unclear to me if this is a bug or if that is the new intended direction, so that may change in the future. If you want large items but you don't want to carry them in your hands, you can instead use hauling. Hauling is toggled on or off by pressing the backslash key, that's this symbol on your keyboard. If you're standing on a tile with items when you press the key, then you will begin hauling. Each step that you take will then transfer those items with your character as they move to the next tile. This can be used to go up or down stairs moving these items, but it does not work when you step on a vehicle tile. A quick word of warning about hauling though, the time required to move will be variable based on how many items you're moving at a time. If you have many items, it could take you several minutes to move just one tile, so do not use hauling unless you're in a safe position to do so. And now that I'm starting to talk about this, I should probably make a video on its own explaining the limits of inventory rather than going into all of them here, so we're just going to move forward. And then finally, depending on what version of the game you're playing on, you will notice that some items displayed in this menu will include both a container and a contents item. This allows you to pick up either the container with the stuff inside of it or simply pick up the contents. In other words, if I find a box of duct tape, I may want just the duct tape but not the box. So I would pick up just the tape and leave the box behind. If you try to pick up both the container and the contents item, the game will automatically change to only pick up the container since that will then keep the item inside. 
If, uh, I mean, hopefully that makes sense. I don't know how else to explain it. Keep in mind that liquids cannot be picked up without a container, and if for some reason the game allows you to do so, you should not do that. That's a, that's a bug. And if that happens, you know, it will probably lead to the liquid eventually becoming unusable. Anyway, that's the basics of how you loot. You just pick things up. It's pretty straightforward. But now let's talk about priorities. When you first get into a new game, your character needs, I mean, literally everything. You might have some valuable tools or starting equipment, depending on what profession you chose in character creation. But most of the time, you're going to need just a lot of stuff, and you're not going to start the game with those items. As the game progresses, you will accumulate many of the items that you're going to need, but as time goes by, you will start to identify the specific things that you're missing. Hacksaws and wrenches tend to be tools that people need to work on a vehicle, and sometimes you'll find yourself needing those specific items. Uh, so that's the progress of the game's loot. At first, you need literally everything and will find yourself picking up pretty much every item that you come across. As the game develops, your focus will narrow down and you'll prioritize only taking the stuff that you actually need. In the early game, you can loot most any location and find something of value because you have nothing, and in the later game, you're going to prioritize specific locations that have a higher chance of giving you the elusive items that you're looking for. So with all of that said, what should be your priority on day one? This is obviously open to personal preference, but I suggest houses and I imagine most of the community would agree with me. Houses in Cataclysm are by far the most common building and they hold a wide variety of different kinds of loot. Many houses will have a fridge with some food, several cabinets of less perishable food. There will be drawers with useful tools and materials, there will be bookshelves of books and dressers full of clothing. And you're going to need pretty much all of those things when you first start the game. The easiest way to secure food in Cataclysm is to simply loot houses. Each house will probably have enough food for at least one day of your game, probably multiple days worth of food. And since you'll be able to loot quite a few of them in any given day, you should have no trouble finding food whatsoever. You can think of houses like a loot box from some other game. It's going to be hard to find a really high value good item. The odds, you know, just are not in your favor, but it's a great way to find just random crap that you're going to need. Leather clothing, for instance, it's pretty common now. Now, and even though they had their protection values nerfed pretty significantly, they still provide better insulation from damage than cotton clothing. And you can find both cotton and leather clothes in most houses. Now you won't find the highest tier books in a house, but you will find an assortment of low to mid-range books that you are going to need. And many houses have a junk drawer that can give you things like duct tape or a hammer or string, things that you're going to need for crafting in the early game. So my firm suggestion is that you should loot houses first. That's literally the number one building that I go to on day one. Obviously, if you start in a different kind of location, like say you start your game in a military base, obviously you're gonna loot that first, but houses are a good go-to for most of these starting scenarios. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about some of the meta locations that you're going to be looking for, I guess. If you're looking for books, well, bookstores and libraries are excellent places to search. Schools also have a ton of books, as does the mall, which has a two-story bookstore. If you're looking for tools, well, that's going to depend on which tool you want. Most of them, though, can be found in places like a garage or a hardware store. Now, as of this recording, there are a few different types of hardware stores. Some of them are completely useless and will only give you like a few items like pipe fittings, which are pretty garbage. Uh, but there are other layouts that are absolutely packed to the brim with valuable tools, pickaxes, chainsaws, all kinds of stuff. So those are the two things you're probably going to be looking for the most as the game develops, which would be books and tools. But since item spawns vary so wildly, I can't really cover everything you would look for. However, there are a few newbie traps in the game that I think I should mention here to get you to avoid them. Now, as of the time of this recording, basically every grocery store in the game has been looted. This is one of my biggest pet peeves with the game. I think this is just a terrible, terrible choice, and I think it really punishes new players. Do not go to grocery stores. It's the biggest newbie trap in the game. Last I checked, there's like a 94% chance that it'll be looted. It'll just be a waste of your time. Search houses and restaurants instead if you're looking for food. Similarly, almost all military surplus shops have been looted. Their ratio isn't quite as bad as grocery stores, but there is still a really good chance that you'll come away empty handed. So if you spot one on the other side of town, it's not worth it. You know, we see a lot of new players put themselves at risk for these locations. It's just not worth it. There's probably nothing over there and you're just going to be risking your life for garbage. 
On that same note, gun shops were recently reworked. I'm not 100% on how valuable they are at the moment. It used to be that they would almost never have ammo. They would almost never have magazines that would match up to the guns, things like that. Now, a recent change to them also made this kind of worse, in my opinion, though I believe someone said that that was being worked on and fixed. So frankly, this is a toss up depending on what game version you're running. I personally don't really go to gun shops. Number one, many of them have alarms that will go off. And number two, they're often barricaded and take work to get inside. Side. Uh, oh, and number three, it's easier to get guns and ammo from military zombies and military barricades. Now, we'll probably cover this when I make a video about guns. Just know that gun shops probably are not a priority for you. If they're nearby and you have the means to check them, you might as well give it a shot, but don't overextend yourself by pushing across town for a gun shop. Like the other locations I mentioned, you're most likely not going to find anything and you're probably just going to be angry and possibly put yourself in danger for nothing. And those are three of what I consider newbie traps, things that new players see and they think that they need to prioritize but are actually huge letdowns. Now there are plenty of dangerous places in the game and I can't really cover all of them. Just remember that in this game, risk does not equal reward. There are plenty of places that have a lot of enemies and practically no value to the player. Just because you see a lot of enemies, it doesn't mean you're going to find a lot of loot. I know other games are like that where, you know, you kill the big boss monster and you get a big reward. That's not how Cataclysm is. And uh, yeah, you're going to need a lot of items to progress in the game. If you ever find yourself stuck on one specific thing, you can look up if that item is craftable using HHG, a website that we talked about previously. I will, of course, link to that in the description down below. Sometimes it's a huge headache to craft items yourself, but it also can be necessary. And of course, there are items that you're just not going to find in the world. Most weapons, you know, are not not big swords are not very common in the world you're gonna have to make most of them yourself other things are just hard to find sometimes and you might have to craft them for example hacksaws can be tricky to find and can be a huge limitation when you're trying to do vehicle work as a result, you might decide to make one yourself. Uh, but this, of course, leads to you having to make a forge, obtain charcoal for it, make a variety of forge tools, and have a few book recipes. It's kind of a nightmare, but it also is a reliable way to get a hacksaw, and it may be an option for you depending on what stage of the game you're in. And alright, hopefully you learned a little something about looting, or at least gained some meta knowledge about places in the world. Thank you for watching, hit that like button on the way out, and I'll see you next time.